Okay, welcome back to the session on uh, different types of uh, learned behavior. Uh, in this presentation, we'll be looking into uh, insight learning, uh, latent learning, and other types of uh, uh, learned behavior. Uh, the first one, insight learning. Insight learning appears to be the highest form of learning, and uh, it may be defined as the ability of an animal uh, to solve complex problems that demands um, something more than trial and error or uh, like uh, other types of learning methods. Uh, so among uh, this uh, learning methods, uh, we can see that uh, this is the learned behavior in which animal learns how to solve uh, complex problems easily and immediately. And it is a type of learning which is uh, rare in invertebrates but very common in among um, mammals. And we can see that uh, these uh, kind of learned behavior usually it is characterized by high understanding, analytical thinking, reasoning, uh, good retention, and high transfer in problem solving and learning situations. Um, insight, uh, insight learning uh, does not result from trial and error learning as we have already seen, and it uh, relies more on understanding, thinking, analyzing, reasoning, etc. Uh, it, it was Kohler uh, in 1912 who conducted experiments on chimpanzees to study insight learning. Uh, Kohler uh, gives a classic example of animal insight from chimpanzees. Uh, when presented with a bunch of bananas too high to reach, that is the bunch of banana was actually hung from the uh, roof of a cage, uh, actually it was found that the chimpanzees uh, they would pile up boxes they just kept bo one box over the other to make a stand for themselves so as to raise the bananas though the chimpanzees arrived at this situation quite suddenly they, be they were benefited by the previous experiences of playing with the boxes okay so um, uh, that kind of a learning is known as latent learning okay that is uh, they had been playing with the boxes. They had been keeping one box over the other and saw that the height can be increased or they can reach a, a higher uh, level and all. So uh, then later, uh, like uh, in the future, they used this particular learning to uh, a situation. Okay, so that kind of a learning, which is known as latent learning, which will be learning in later detail. And um, this uh, kind of a behavior, it showed. Uh, considerable uh, trial and error as well that is uh, while piling up boxes one over the other uh, the one box may just topple down and uh, they may not be able to uh, keep the box properly on the other so they have learned it through trial and error to keep one box over the other uh, in a stable way so callers uh, chimpanzees were using knowledge obtained in one context applying it in another context by interpretation and reasoning so obviously insight learning is much more than trial and error learning and latent learning okay so uh, th this uh, insight learning as we have already seen it is a higher form of learning more uh, uh, what they call uh, common among uh, like higher vertebrates especially mammals and uh, this requires high order thinking reasoning analyzing uh, etc okay now next one on the course is the latent learning um, latent learning is otherwise uh, known as uh, exploratory uh, learning and uh, we can see that this exploratory uh, learning as the name suggests uh, it's a learning behavior in which an animal explores new circumstances and surroundings and learns information that can be useful later on even if even if it is not immediately being used it may be used in the later on circumstances or situations sometimes an animal learns yeah. to perform certain functions in response to many indifferent stimuli indifferent in the sense the stimuli may be there but there is no uh, like uh, reward or punishment associated with that so though, though the process may involve associative learning um, what is learned may not be so obvious uh, or overt at that time uh, that is learning may not be used or uh, it may not be useful for the animal at that time this learning remains latent or hidden uh, due to lack of any reward or punishment however this kind of a learning is may become advantageous to the animal in future when a situation arises okay 
a very uh, good example or a good experiment on latent learning was conducted by Tolman on mice when they were let uh, in a maze. Uh, a non-hungry rat was allowed to explore a maze for 10 days. Okay, so the rat was allowed to be in the maze for 10 days and it played around. During this time, the animal learned several things, but they remained latent. That is, they had been moving around to the maze and they have been, they have uh, like uh, become so acquainted with the different uh, like uh, the parts and all. Okay, uh, but uh, whatever they have learned, it had remained latent. And on the eleventh day, it was made hungry, um, and the animal could uh, find out the food placed at a particular end of the maze quickly. That is, you can see over here. Uh, this is the starting point. It was released over here. These um, uh, mice were released over here, and unless they take the right path they will not be able to reach the uh, food okay so these hungry rats were actually let through the maze okay and since they have already the um, got acquainted with the maze they can easily find a way out okay so on the other hand um, uh, if the animal had not given any opportunity to explore the maze uh, previously it would not have reached the food so quickly so here the learning during the previous exploration uh, had remained latent and helped the animal later to find the food on time. So this, thus the latent learning is a type of learning uh, that involves an animal using experience gained at one time in the modification of behavior at a much later time. So if we take an example from the human perspective, just imagine that you have been taken by your uh, parents to the school. Okay, um, maybe like uh, you may have uh, been uh, like uh, your parents may have uh, driven in a car and uh, at your younger ages or at your uh, early school ages they may have taken you with them okay but after a certain age when you are ready to go alone obviously that latent learning which you had taken from your early age early school age may have helped you to take the correct path to the school okay that is a latent learning right so uh, i hope it is clear about the latent learning now the next one is imprinting that's a very interesting uh, uh, what you call uh, study also had been conducted on imprinting uh, imprinting is a form of learning that occurs during the early life of many birds and uh, mammals and uh, it is actually a phase sensitive learning that is phase in the sense early childhood phase okay so it happens during that particular phase of and it is rapid and independent of consequences of behavior. It is very rapid. So it responds to the stimuli at a very rapid rate. And as already seen, it is more, um, what you call, uh, prominent among the higher vertebrates, birds and mammals. And major stimulus for these uh, for this kind of a behavior is uh, visual or auditory. Okay. Now, uh, we can see that in printing, we have um, it, the... Uh, Major studies on imprinting was conducted by uh, Conard Lawrence. Uh, he was the one who introduced the concept of uh, imprinting. And it refers to various behavioral changes whereby a, a young animal uh, become attached to a mother figure. And it is the ability of a young animal to imprint in the brain some of its early experiences. Okay, while um, Lawrence was experimenting uh, on uh, imprinting, he actually studied geese. Okay, it is actually this is the gee, the goose, and he was studying geese. And um, uh, Lawrence got broods of go uh, gooselings to follow him and treat him as their mother figure. So these uh, goose uh, laid the eggs, and as soon as the uh, what do you call the um, like uh, gooselings came out, these gooselings found Lawrence as the mother figure and it, uh, these uh, whole set of gooselings started to move uh, behind uh, Lawrence. Okay, it started following Lawrence wherever they went. And a good deal of work on imprinting has been carried out using birds like uh, ducks, geese, chickens, uh, peasants, etc. Uh, uh, and the imprinting usually uh, take place soon after hatching or soon after birth uh, and often results in a very fixed attachment, difficult to change. And Lawrence described it as a unique form of learning, which, unlike any other form of learning, was irreversible and is restricted to a brief sensitive phase or sensitive period just after hatching. The major stimulus for imprinting is uh, visual and the second stimulus is auditory. 
There are two kinds of imprinting, the sexual imprinting and the filial imprinting. Sexual imprinting 